your shoulder. Give them strength to carry them through and the comfort and peace they need. So as we lift them up before you, God, just help them in their time of need. And then we would ask you, God, as we look at your lesson today, that you would anoint us and empower us with the presence of the Holy Spirit. As we look out at our world today, what a sad world it is out there sometime, God, of all the stuff that's going on. We just ask, dear God, that you just soften the hearts of some of them who have turned away from you. Help us to be an instrument there that we can go and share the gospel message. And as we go forth and listen, we ask all this in your precious Son's holy name. Amen. All right. You ready? <clears throat> Good morning, and welcome to the Adult One Bible Class here at Central Baptist Church. We're glad you could join us by video, and we'd like for you to come and be with us in person sometime. So make your plans and come on over. Now, before we get started... We'll have some uh, special music for you. And then we'll be looking at our lesson today in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 25. We're going to talk about a, a lady of wisdom. So um, as we get ready, we'll say, Harold, you want to sing first, you said? All right, Harold Skelton, uh, going to come and bring us a blessing and song. Thank you, Brother Boone. Uh, Thank you for inviting me to come and sing. My wife Rita would have come with me, with me this morning, but she couldn't. She couldn't be here. We got a, one of her daughters' birthday is today, so she's at home cooking. So, so, uh, but uh, good to see all y'all, and uh, I hope uh, hope this the song will do do you good this morning. And uh, I'll go ahead and sing the first one. You can start. Is not this the land of Beulah? Blessed, blessed land of light, where the flowers bloom forever and the sun is always bright I am dwelling on the mountain where the golden sunlight streams o'er the land whose wondrous beauty far exceeds my fondest dreams where the air is pure ethereal laden with the breath of flowers they are blooming by the fountain the ever ending bars is not this the land of Beulah blessed blessed land of light where the flowers bloom forever and the sun is always bright. Oh, Beulah land, sweet Beulah land, as on thy highest mount I stand, I look away across the sea where mansions are prepared for me view the shining glorious shore my heaven my home forevermore where my home 
shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. Thank you very much. Uh, the uh, that's a, about four arrangements that Squire Parsons put together. This other one I'm going to try to do is uh, where no one stands alone. Once I stood in the night With my head bowed low In the darkness as black as could be Then my heart felt alone And I cried, oh Like a king, I may live in a palace so tall, with great riches to call my own, but I don't know a thing in this whole I that's worse than being alone. Hold my hand all the way, every hour, every day, from here to the great unknown. I sung for y'all here a while back and I didn't know the name of and that's it that's where no one stands alone and he did a wonderful job with it I'm telling you I'll try it again one day <laughs> with music
tempted and tried we oft made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long why been blessed today. How about y'all? You think so? All right. Harold, we appreciate you coming and singing today. You won't have to have an invitation. Anytime you want to come, just just pop in and do it. Uh, I think I've been knowing, what, about 50 years maybe? I think something like that. Harold was a, Harold was a deacon out at Trinity Church out on Dawson Highway along with Dave uh, Brady. So, uh, but we're glad you came today, Harold. We we blessed us with those two songs. Brenda always does. She does a good job. Glad and you're feeling better. Glad I'm feeling better. Brenda is yeah. gone with her cold. <laughs> she is. And now I'm having a problem with algae or something. I'm a little bit scratchy, so uh, y'all bear with me today. Look at our lesson today. It's uh, Abigail, a woman of wisdom. It sounds like a woman, though, doesn't it? Wisdom. A woman of wisdom. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. You know, you hear, you hear the saying sometimes, 
People say, keep your nose out of somebody else's business. You hear that a lot, don't you? Well, luckily, <laughs> luckily we got one here that got their nose in the business. So uh, who's reading the first verses? Go ahead. One of Nabal's young men informed Abigail, Nabal's wife, look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, but he screamed at them. The men treated us very well. When we were in the field, we weren't harassed, and nothing of ours was missing the whole time we were living among them. They were a wall around us both day and night the entire time we were with them herding the sheep. Now consider carefully what you should do, because there is certain to be trouble for our master and his entire family. He is such a worthless fool, nobody can talk to him. Right, now notice in the story here, this is a time where David is uh, being chased by Saul, because he has a discrepancy. He's going to be the next king. Saul is going to be going out. Him and his group goes towards the uh, desert. While there, his men looked after the flock of sheep for Nabal. They said they made like a head, like a wall of protection around him, look, look after him, and see that no harm came to him. So I guess when we think about that, you got to be, a, uh, I guess, a person of trust. And to do that, you got to prove to people that you have a reputation of trust. And that's where we need to decide today. Do you feel like everybody's honest today? Okay. <clears throat> well, this is what we're looking at here. When Nabal and uh, Abigail, they were both wealthy. They had a lot of servants. There was a time there when we see how the matter come around and, and, and how they classified her. She was very intelligent, but not only that, she was beautiful. And Nabal was not spoke of very highly. He was rude, selfish. Uh, they called him fool, foolish. Some of the slaves called him stupidity. He had so much uh, uh, smart, not smart about him. You ever met somebody that way? <laughs> well, some of his servants even told him that. I mean, not to his face, I guess, but they put this name to him, how, how stupid he was. And he was a very selfish person. Now, I've met some people who rude and crude before. But the reason he was, is David and them needed food for their 600 people of men. So he knew it. there was time to get the sheep, they were sharing the, sharing the sheep. I think he said he had like maybe 3,000 sheep, which were brought in a lot of money at that time. So David thought, well, you know, I was a shepherd for my father, so we could talk some stories about shepherding. And uh, maybe I can give him some pointers on how to uh, work with his flock and stuff. Or if he wants to, I can help him do the shearing. So he sends a few of his men up to see if they can get provisions because it would be in a time of shearing sheep. He would have plenty of food there for all the people working. So he sends a few of his people up and ask and send a very pleasant greeting. And Nabal says, no, I will not even give you bread, water, or a piece of meat. Nothing. And got real belligerent with him and sent him off. <clears throat> when I went back and told David what happened, he was a little bit bewildered at first, but then that turned to anger. He told the guys to get men up their swords, and he put his sword on, and they were going to annihilate Nabob's family. One of the servants in the family came and talked to Abigail. And told her what was happening. He said, you're a man of reason. And the table's not. You know, something's going to have to be done. Or he's going to kill all the, all the whole uh, household of family. And so we see the surprise there. How to stop a situation. And how the trouble was coming. The entire family was uh, somewhat in trouble. Now at this particular time. He was an honest man. And so we're seeing how the situation came about. <clears throat> Would she listen? See, Nabal said that David was lying, his character was, but if you look at how he revealed that, nobody trusted Nabal. He was an untrusted man. Now, I've seen some people like that. In fact, I knew a guy once, he talking about rude and crude. He was the rudest, crudest person I knew, and his language could consist of about every other word was cursing. 
Now, I've got to tell you the surprise I got was when he died, they asked me to do his funeral, and I go, oh, Lord. <laughs> I did. I said, how am I going to do this? I mean, I, I looked at him as a vile, unsaved, unrighteous person. Now, how am I going to talk over this guy? Because the way I see him is not in the best of sight. <laughs> so I did talk to his family, and thank goodness they shared with me that he changed his life and got saved. And I said, praise the Lord, I can talk now, you know. That's difficult when you see somebody like that. This is the kind of person, neighbor, well, he was a vile, wretched person. Very selfish. Very ugly. So get that in mind. Now here's David, a very honest man, very caring, going to be the next king. Need some help? And what they talk about, hospitality. Do we care for strangers sometimes? Do we show hospitality to them? He said there was a code then, it's called Hospitality Code, that you reached out to him. You've shared your provisions with him. And he knew that they had enough to share. But anyway, when he went back and told that, they got ready to go in. They were going to take that family out. So this servant came and talked to Abigail. And when you see what's happened there, the time of the service, how, how, how this came about. I mean, really. This was a time that they looked at him being a, a wretched fool. Now that's something to say. I, was, I grew up, my grandmother used to say, don't ever call somebody a fool, you're in danger of hellfire. I don't know. I think the scripture says that. But they called this man that. And talk about how worthless he was. Read the next verse to somebody. One of Nabal's young men informed Abigail, Nabal's wife, Look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, but he screamed at them. Good. The next one. Never mind. When <laughs> Abigail saw David, she quickly got off the donkey and knelt down with her face to the ground and paid homage to David. She knelt at his feet and said, The guilt is mine, my lord, but please let your servant speak to you directly. Listen to the words of your servant. My lord should pay no attention to this worthless fool, Nabal, for he lives up to his name. His name means stupid, and stupidity is all he knows. I, your servant, didn't see my lord's young man whom you sent. Now, my lord, as surely as the lord lives, and as you yourself live, it is the lord who kept you from participating in bloodshed and avenging yourself by your own hand. May your enemies and those who intend to harm my Lord be like Nabal. Let this gift your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the young men who follow my Lord. <coughs> Please forgive your servant's offense, for the Lord is certain to make a lasting dynasty for my Lord because he fights the Lord's battle. Throughout your life, may evil not be found in you. Okay, we look at this. Godly wisdom is no good unless it's exercised. I mean, you got to you got to put it into practice. And I think uh, in the book of James says, <clears throat> "To know what to do it, to know to do it good." <coughs> excuse me, and don't do it to them. It's a sin. I think when you're looking at Abigail, she was looking at the point that she needed to do something good. I think had she heard the conversation when the servant came to ask for food, it would have been a different situation. You know, when you look at when you look at the situation, most men probably would be not as ugly as he was, but would probably be a non-caring that the, the wife or the lady of the house would be more concerned with compassion than the guy would. And she had compassion on that. She knew, she knew that she needed to step up and do something. And so when they come to her and told her, she, she realized then, I'm not going to talk to Nabal because he's a stupid fool. That's what she said. You can't talk to him. Ronnie Sargent had something he used to say. He didn't call people stupid, but he said they're not the sharpest pencil in the box. And that's probably true. So this guy was actually called stupid. So and that's from his wife and from his servants. That's the ones that knew him the, the most. So here's what, promptly, she started getting up food to feed at least 400 people that was there without even asking Nabob because she knew what his answer would be. She'd run into that stuff before with him. So we see how she took enough food 
<coughs> for the 400 there. And uh, she was not afraid. Now think about this. Here's a lady loading up enough food to feed 400 people, carries it to a group of 400 guys armed with swords, but she didn't seem to be afraid. You see, the Lord was with her because she was doing what was right in the sight of God. And she realized that when she went. And so what they're looking at the sacrifice she made, the claim that she had, the responsibility she took on herself. <coughs> she wasn't without fault. So we see a claim here. First of all, she admitted the guilt. I mean, the, the, of being the, the one that's guilty of, of turning away. Or she said, I'll own up to it. I'm the one. Well, he knew better than that. It wasn't her. But she was accepting the blame. Well, sometimes when you're trying to reconcile with somebody, it's better, first of all, if you can admit that you're wrong. If you can admit that, then you can get to, to, to temperature down a little bit. And said when she said that, David's anger kind of left. He wasn't as angry as he was before. It kind of gave him a calming feel. I don't know if you ever had somebody that's upset with you and you had to go and apologize to them. You saw how angry they were to you. But after you apologized, you saw how they calmed down some. And this is what happened here when she told him, first of all, I'm the one. I'm the one that's guilty. And we see the catalyst there has reconciliation. It took in the person here who is sinner. First of all, the case of Abel, how he had sinned and dealt with the situation in an unfriendly way, and how she demonstrated the humility here. That's that's what we're looking at. David's authority here in the matter, because he's going to be king, so he has authority. And she said, listen to the words. And she cut off the, the donkey, and said she fell down on her knees right before his feet to show him uh, homage of his uh, honored position, because he still had authority. And she recognized that, and she wanted him to know that she didn't recognize it. So you see the offending party here, how the, how the reconciliation came about. So we see the servant how making excuses sometimes, that don't help any. We look how it happened here in her case, that she accepted the fault. And then as she looked, she had been there with David's servants, talking to them about the situation. But then she looks at her request was only accepting the guilt of responsibility. David knew then the measure of authority where it was and how it's going to be. So he, in turn, talks about the fact there. David still out how he reminded them in spite of all the circumstances. She reminded him of the situation when he killed Goliath, how Saul had been chasing him. She brought up the thing on how God's protection had been on him. And so we see how the fight was. So David then, being a king, he wanted then not to reject the words, but he wanted to accept those. And we see the mighty hand there, the warfare which is shed. And then we look at the allowing the motions. That sin had been forgiven. The consequences. What he said, May your enemies and those who intend to harm my Lord be like Nabal. In other words, she didn't want any harm to come to David because he was going to be the next king in authority. And so when we look at that and try to respect people for who they are, sometimes I'm not so sure we're so disrespectful. We are disrespectful to people sometimes. So she called what she brought him a gift. This is a gift. She didn't go with the first thing and ask for forgiveness. After they had the conversation later, then she asked him to please forgive. Well, then by so doing, she saved her family from being annihilated. Now, if you think about that, how many mothers or how many women would not want to save their family from being killed? That's what she did. She stepped up to the plate and did some stuff that was terrible. As far as looking at how people would look at what she did, but, but also we look at the confession. The grace that was shown. The, the blessing. Then she went on to talk to David about the blessing and how God would bless him. Don't you sometimes look at people who want to bless them for where they are? That's what he's saying here. Because of the fights here, he says, these are the Lord's battle. You're fighting the Lord's battle. 
and continue to do so. Don't fight those battles on your own, but take on the Lord's battles and fight those. Do we try to fight the Lord's battles? What are those? What comes at us today when we look at what's happening in, in life? <coughs> Do we have a world out there sometime that come against us like Nabal with him? Sure. But we look at the pronouncement here of what David's reference to the dynasty, how what a reward that will be. And what kind of reward do we have? The dynasty that we're looking forward to is a reward in heaven one day. And that's what he's saying. Read the last verses real quick. Somebody who's got that. Then David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who sent you to meet me today. May your discernment be blessed, and may you be blessed. Today you kept me from participating in bloodshed, and avenging myself by my own hand. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, who prevented me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, Nabal wouldn't have had any males left by morning light. Then David accepted what he had brought him and said, she brought him and said, Go home in peace. See... I have heard what you said and have granted your request. Notice, notice how David here is talking about this. He, first of all, he was recognizing God's hand in the situation. <coughs> and that day, by her coming that day, had she delayed, it would have been devastation. Sometimes when you've got to do something, it's to do it then. Not tomorrow, not next week, but right then. You ever been in a situation where Maybe you felt like you need to go ahead and do something, but then you put it off and something bad happened. Well, that's what he's telling her. If she'd have waited, prolonged, he would have had the opportunity to go in and do something that would hurt him to kill her family. Who brought sin on his life. So he said, because she came today. Obeying what the Lord said, it was important then to obey that. But we see the aspect of this hospitality. The guests in exchange, how the appreciation was and how she praised that and we see the whole countless change in it. Anyway, we see the instance there how it started as a matter of hospitality, but it ended in a different situation. She would have pronounced a blessing on David that his life would be blessed as he's going to rule and reign the thing. I think when we say sometime, you know, we want God's blessing on them, I think we want the good for the people. She referred to him as Jehovah. David referred to him as Elohim, the God, the judge of Israel. So we see the authority here as being the question. Now the strength and authority. Nabal and his household was under the authority that he could answer and be the judge of Israel. Judgment was on him. So we see the acceptance of Abraham's gift and how it was accepted as plea. But then we see simply the hearing of what happened. David listened considerably because he listened and heard Abigail's wisdom. <coughs> he granted her request, and he told her to go in peace. He's going to not go bring her any harm. Now, this doesn't give the rest of the story, but I'm going to tell you what happened. Later that day, Nabal had a big party, and he got so drunk, it said then his heart just quit. He had a heart attack. And David heard about that. And later he went to see Abigail and took her as his wife. That's how much he liked her because she was full of intelligence and beauty. And he took her as his wife. Things started off bad for her with this fool that she was married to, but she wound up and hanged the king of time. That's the end of the story. You can read that and see it for yourself, but that's the way it is. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our time together today. Lord, when we look at some of these stories, we don't know who writes these for us, but sometimes maybe they don't come across as well as they should. Sometimes they do. But there's a moral in that story, God, that we should be hospital to our guests. Show that hospitality to open up and be friendly to those who are in need. Even sharing provisions, even if it takes a toll on our provisions to share the provisions with those. And I think we see in this that how you conduct yourself and how God then will bless you from your way you conduct yourself. 
So now, God, as we go forth in our world, help us now to be better Christians for you, that we can witness and see some life change. Let us be hospitality to those around us, not just in food, but just showing the friendship and fellowship we need to do. So go with us now, direct our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.